So welcome everyone, welcome to the first full car review on this channel. This car here is uh, a car that I've just finished building for a customer. This is Tom's Super S Turbo. That's right, Keller Micra Turbo. Now, we do a lot of turbo kits at our workshop, uh, mail order, but this is the first one that's been the driving, drive out conversion from start to finish. So we'll start by going over the externals of the car to start with. It's a Supress model, which means as standard, it comes with a disc rear axle. So we have front discs and rear discs. On the front, we have got an upgraded AP four pot system. The customer has already taken into account the additional power going through. So the brakes have already been upgraded to suit. Uh, fantastic kit by AP because the, the cylinders are perfectly suited for the factory mass cylinder. Then on the rear, we've just gone some upgraded discs and upgraded pads on the rear. Um, suspension wise, we've got BC coilovers front and back. On the rear, we've got a Gizfab panard rod and the Gizfab rear trailing arms. And also complementing the rear is the import rear lights. But we're not here about the wheels and the fancy rear import lights. We are here for what's under the bonnet. So under the bonnet, we will be greeted by the factory 1.3 litre engine as fitted with a Super S. Now this engine is 100 percent stock we have not opened it up there's no forged pistons there's no forged rods there's no fancy cams that is by all purpose means the engine as it came from out of the factory obviously as we can see we have on top here a giant turbo but actually it's not so giant looks can be perceiving this is a gt20 a garrett gt20 ball bearing turbo now we chose this turbo for its size for its response on a little further 1300 micra and after driving it around for a couple of weeks now road testing it for the customer i can say that that is a really good size turbo for this engine fantastic response and we've also got a bit of top end there as well so attaching the gt20 turbo to the engine is a full top mount tube manifold that i have made personally for the boost control we have got a gfb ex38 external wastegate and we have a full turbo back two and a half inch exhaust system on here as well is my prototype top feed injector conversion no doubt if you're watching this you're into your micros so what that means is is on the old dizzy engines they use the old style side feed injectors which can be pretty difficult to get aftermarket injectors to fit inside injector cups that come with a micro a common conversion what we used to be was to get an old sr20 fuel rail chop it up to suit the the, the, the spacing of the micro then use sr20 injectors which then gives you a broader range of injectors downside is it's old technology and modifying the rails is a pain in the rear end so this uses a an adapter kit that uses a set of machined billet spacers and o-rings and that allows us to fit the later style top feed fuel injection rail onto there so injector wise in this case we have a set of astra vxr bosch 470 cc injectors which as i can tell you already has given us a lot of breathing space when it comes to the fuel system a lot of mistakes that people make when turbocharging the micros is they keep the stock injectors they ramp up the fuel pressure and they think that's gonna help the engines survive well unfortunately it's not and this here is living proof of that and then along with the injector rail conversion is we have a throttle body relocation kit which essentially rotates the throttle body 90 degrees and rotates it 90 degrees so it points towards the passenger strut tower and that has allowed us to get enough room to get clearance for the the injector conversion now one of the key things to ensuring that your turbocharged micro keeps the pistons where they are and the ring lands from melting is a good ECU. Again, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to run a turbo system on the factory ECU and it always ends up in a sob story. And in this car, we have the Howtech Elite 1500. Fortunately for this model with the distributor ignition, Howtech do do a plug and play solution for it. With the exception of two wires to wire in the external air intake temperature sensor, by all means the ECU is a plug and play affair. And to complement the Howtech Elite 1500 is that we also do have the Howtech IC7 dash, just so we can keep an eye on the vitals when the car is in operation. 
So all in all, that makes for a pretty impressive package when it comes to an old Micro. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Stop waffling on, let's go for a drive. Now, the GT20 Turbo was such a great selection for this particular build. It's got such amazing response. I'm currently cruising in fifth gear. You put your foot to the floor, and it picks up speed pretty good. You know, usually you'd have to drop it down a couple of gears to rev the absolute tits out of a Micra to get it back up to sort of motorway speed. And in this, it's literally plant your foot in fifth. There we are, motorway speeds. Fantastic. And as I've said, I have been driving this car as my daily for the last couple of weeks, with permission from the owner, of course just so we can make sure nothing's going to fall apart when we give it back to the customer. There's nothing worse than when the customer lives four hours away, which in this case, we give them the car back and a bolt falls loose and causes a gasket or an, oil, or an oil leak. By allowing me to do two, 300 miles in this before I give it the customer back, it allows me to rectify those issues before we do give it back. So it's been fantastic. It really has. And honestly, I really do not want to give it back it's such a fun car to drive so the weight of this car with the sunroof i believe is about 840 850 kilos the engine at the minute is we are running on wastegate pressure which is a 5 psi spring power wise uh, we have yet to get it on a dyno we are still running it on a, a base tune just to sort of get some data log into the ecu so when we do get to the dyno, we've got a bit, we've got a better idea of what needs to be done to tune the engine to its potential. And at five psi, just by gut feeling, I'm going to guess we're around 140, 150 horsepower mark. Which, yes, you could say that's not a lot of gain for the amount of money that's been ploughed into this car. But cars are like this. Some people are sentimental, and they will spend a lot of money to maintain and give the cars to come up and stay they need all along and this is a prime example of that <laughs> honestly what a machine what a machine now with it being such a car of such an age there are some caveats to the car obviously I'm not sure how I'm not sure how well the microphone is picking up but there are some knocks, there are some bangs, there's a load of spare parts in the boot that I probably should have taken out before this road test that are just rattling and knocking about. We've got the traditional K11 Micra gear stick rattle which if you've had a K11 Micra they all do, this is no exception but overall it's just a fantastic driving experience. Now, I know these comments are going to be down below is, what's a 0-60? How fast does it go? Well, it's a customer's car, and I am treating it with respect as if it was my own car, and I'm not going to divulge that information with you, because purely, I don't have it. I've not needed to. I've not needed to drive this car beyond the speed limit, and I'm not going to put the car under a 0-60 torture chest for the sake of a video, but it's definitely a lot quicker than a factory micro. <laughs> but honestly this car has been such a joy to drive for these last couple of weeks and I'm going to miss it when they hand it back to the customer next week because honestly it feels like I'm 17 again back in the hot hatch era obviously I've grown up a bit I've got some bigger and faster cars now and honestly nothing excites me personally than a small engined small hatchback car with a bit of poke to put a smile on your face <laughs> And as with all small hatchbacks, makes for a great back road car. Just listen to it. Just listen to the turbo spools. Oh, it's addicted, it really is. I think we're gonna have to build one for ourselves in a future episode. Because honestly, this is so much fun. It has the right amount of power, it makes all the right noises. Honestly, it's such 
it's such a fantastic car and honestly the customer is going to absolutely love it and i'll tell you one thing not only does it make a decent amount of power not only is it still on the stock 1.3 litre engine not only does it make the right noises it's also incredible on fuel honestly i've put 40 quid in this of tesco's finest 99 and i've i've done over 200 miles and bear in mind my daily is a subaru forester which takes 75 pounds of equivalent in fuel and does 220 miles to that same 70 pound in fuel and i've done more than that on half the amount of fuel and that's all down to the fact you've not got to rev the absolute nuts off it to get it to move anywhere honestly if you've got a micro turbocharge it just make sure you do it the right way and one of the good things about these Haltech ECUs is as you can see here we've got the absolutely glorious looking IC7 dash and it's displaying all the relevant information that we need we have got our boost, we've got our coolant temperature, we've got our air intake temperature, which at the minute is 12 degrees, absolutely mega. It also shows you the injector duty, the ignition angle, battery voltage, and our wide band reading down here. Unfortunately, the oil pressure isn't read through the factory wiring loom, um, only as a yes, no, it doesn't actually give us any data in regards to physical pressure. But honestly, this is a godsend for when you're doing road tests like this. And what we'll do here is we'll come to this junction and we'll try and do a little cheeky pull. Get out for it. Sixty already. That's just how nimble this car is. Honestly, it's a game changer. Absolute game changer. And I know I've said it a million times. I'm really going to miss this car when I give it back to Tom next week because honestly it's been a joy to drive it's made me feel 17 again and uh, yeah it's overall you know, it's made me extremely happy to drive this car around this last couple weeks it's been a pleasure it really has and obviously most importantly making sure the car is as it needs to be when it goes back to the customer to be reliable and so you take it out on the weekend and have some fun So what's the eventual goal for this car? Well, the customer lives in central London and we've had this car for quite a while now doing the build-up process. Um, on my part, I have been a bit lax on the build, so I have had the car for a lot longer than I would have liked, but we're at closer stages now of the build. And in between us receiving the car and today's date is London introduced the ULES charge, the, the controversial ultra low emission zone charge and unfortunately this car is eligible to pay the ULS charge so the customer Tom has decided this is probably going to be more of a track car a bit more of a weekend car going forward and the customer specified that he would like about 200 horsepower eventually we have spec the turbo to do 200 horsepower we're going to hand it back with hopefully about 150 or 160 on the dyno with a safe map on the ECU just to give it a bit of extra protection from melting a piston, a ring land or anything like that just so the customer can get a bit of enjoyment out of it and then if the customer wants to sort of then pursue power targets he can either bring the car back under a disclaimer or he can take it somewhere a bit more local to him to do so but from us he's going to get it back at a safe power level because as we all do when you've had a lot of work done to your car and a bit of a power increase you tend to go kick his head in for the first couple of days and it looks bad on us if it blows up in those first couple of days so it's going to get it back with a super safe lap and there we go we are back where we started after a little afternoon back road blast 
really enjoyed driving this car and I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride just as much I've enjoyed driving this car. Now if you've got any questions in regards to this particular car in particular or maybe a micro build you're looking to do drop a comment down below or get in touch via email, phone, our Facebook page etc. We're more than happy to talk you through what we can do for you in regards to either a mail order turbo kit or a driving drive out conversion. So yeah don't hesitate to get in touch and with that being said we will see you in the next video thanks for watching